Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. So, welcome to the podcast, everybody, and we have Archie back on the podcast again. As, yeah. as we third, said, third soon as you, a charm, isn't it? Oh, mate, absolutely. We well, said as soon as you passed, I'm literally going to kidnap you from the plane and take you for a podcast, and that's pretty much how, how it I mean, so I passed <laughs> what must have been what like an hour ago. I've been I've been doing all my admin in between now and then, doing all my forms to the CAA and then you've just been like time to do the podcast so yeah here we <laughs> are seize the day mate seize the opportunity so you still look pretty excited to me but how did it feel what oh, was your was, yeah I've, I'm still buzzing from it I think I'm gonna be buzzing for the next like five days or something <laughs> like that's that's the normal rate of it it yeah. was incredible um I found it was a bit a bit weird I was happy but I didn't it was kind of like is that it what's next you know it was a bit weird it's uh... <laughs> yeah no, I get that. But how how did the actual test compare to what your perhaps your preconceptions were? Um, well, to be honest, like what we do here at Almat is we do a a mock test beforehand, mm-hmm. as you'll know. Yeah. And to be honest, it didn't really differ that much from that. Like yeah. we, I'd done three mock tests in preparation. I was really nervous for it. I was like, yeah. I want to get in as many that hours uh, in the upcoming days before this as I possibly can. Yeah. And um. It wasn't that different. You know, we started off and we had our brief at the beginning and went through all the mass and balance and then we're on the navigation leg and, and it was just like any normal flight. It was like my cross-country qualifier at that stage. Yeah. Uh, it was it was really calm on it and, and I really settled into it. Like as soon as we started the plane up, everything was just fly the plane and it was it was as simple as that. I think that's why we did, we are so adamant you've got to do a mock test yeah, so that completely. we can see you ready. And also, I think it helps putting you in that test situation because you're flying with somebody that you're perhaps not flying with all the time they're impersonating the examiner and, and giving you as little input as, as an examiner yeah. would you know um and, and running through the preparation you need to know how to do it so that you're well versed in it on the day i think no completely so run us through what you were most worried about with the test so i i don't know i think to, to start with, I will say that it's a test, okay? Yeah. No one's, you know, ev- everyone says relax on it. I completely agree with that. But there is, of course, part of you that the only experience I've had with tests and stuff has been like my driving test, which is far more like scrutinous than yeah. uh, this in a way. Cause, and and that's kind of what I had expected. Yeah. And I was thinking it's going to be, you know, they're looking out for to catch you out. And it wasn't that at all it was it was actually really nice and calm yeah but i i don't know um it it, it didn't differ from what i'd expected mm-hmm. so i was able to kind of just take it in my stride and as i said earlier it was it was just a normal flight that's all it was i was yeah. just going on a flight with someone demonstrating that i can fly the plane safely which if you're at this stage anyway yeah realize that you know you can fly it safely because you've been doing cross country flights. Yeah. You've been doing solos. So your school A isn't going to send you on an exam if you don't, if they don't think you're ready. Yeah. And also if you're at this stage, you're at a brilliant position. Like, well, we've, we've done a lot of due diligence on you. You know, you've, you've been through all of the course. You've brushed up on the things we felt you were weak at. Yeah. You've done, you know, one at least mock tests. In your case, you wanted to do several, which is great, you know. Um, what, so, I, what I did find from it, though, is mm. for me personally, it was stalls. Stalls right. and like the general handling. Like on our first mock test that we did, yeah. it was really cloudy. And I said, I, I don't feel like I can continue with the nav section. And, and yeah. Will, the instructor at the time, he, he was like, oh, fair enough. Mm-hmm. We'll try to do some general handling. And I think that that like kind of shaken structure of, of the test, it wasn't what I was expecting. So yeah. then I was really sloppy. I, I wasn't recovering in time. When I was recovering, I was doing like three maneuvers in one. I was par- powering yeah. the plane back and rolling wing seven and pitching up, which as, as you know, is, is a big yeah, no-no. Yeah. But I was able to kind of work through that. And by the end of it, I was acing the stalls and spin, not spins, but um, spiral dives and, and stuff yeah. like that every single time that we were doing it. And, I just got into like a really good habit and, and and got my technique nailed down before I even stepped foot in the school ready for, for test week. So, yeah. 
I think that's important what you touched on there is that some of this stuff that you were good at a few weeks before or maybe a few months before. Oh, completely. Skill fade it. is... Yeah, yeah, it's huge. And, and everyone said about this, especially during COVID, because yeah. you'd had pilots sitting around for, you know, a year to two years. It, it is it's massive. And yeah. this is all, all goes back to the same point of everyone says, fly as much as you can because it's going to be cheaper. You're going to yeah. enjoy it more. You're going to spend less time in you know less than 30 down the line yeah. going over stuff from less than five that yeah. you you just let fade because of it yeah exactly i'm not sure if you did answer my question what you were most worried about did so you? i think it was stalls to be stalls. honest okay. that, again though it was more the fact that it was a test that's probably what yeah. i was most worried about and i feel like most people are worried about that the fact yeah. that it's a examination yeah, when in exactly. reality it, it's a poor choice of words it's a demonstration of your skill yeah and can you walk us through the test itself from the planning through to the actual? Yeah, actual so test? The, the test can kind of really take place in any order that um, either the applicant or the examiner pleases. That's mm. something, obviously, you have to do your flight plan beforehand. You can't mm. do that after the nav section. But yeah. you, can, you, you can kind of shimmy around. If you want to do the circuits uh, straight away mm. or, you know, do, do your approaches, as they're called in the test, then I'm sure you could sit down with the examiner and there's nothing that says that you have to do that on the last section. It's just norm. Yeah. Um, so what we did is we started off with departure, obviously, mm -hmm. and then we went straight onto our navigation section. Mm -hmm. So we headed due east pretty much over okay. towards uh, Santa Pod Raceway, yeah. at which point I was told, turn around, we're going to do a little diversion. Yes. Um, after you do your diversion, which is you know, standard to do before you reach your second turning point. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll, at least with us, you, you go on and, and you do your, your general handling section. So that's mm -hmm. all the stalls and spiral dives. Mm -hmm. uh, and if the examiner hasn't seen you perform slow flights, then, you know, they get mm -hmm. you to do it there. And after that, you'll make your way back in for arrival procedures yeah. and circuits or approaches showing your yeah. flapless glide and full flap or full precision. Yeah. landing yeah so it, it follows an order but yeah. it's like you say you can change the order but it generally works better to do the nav first because you're relaxed into flying you, you do i know yeah. however though that some people uh they often get frazzled and yeah. when you really need to be concentrating other than nav yeah. is your landings yeah because uh, if if you let your speed slip there that's like going to be an instant fail that's that's what yeah. they you know it's crucial yeah. you're flying at a low airspeed um so some people i know one of my friends when they were getting their ppl done not too long mm. ago uh they asked whether they could do their circuits first so yeah. I, th I think it is important though that you can you do have the freedom you are yeah. piloting command on that day you can you know shimmy stuff around as as you see fit as long as it you know adheres to the exam rules and regulations and yeah. uh, and the examiner's happy with it then you have the freedom to do that mm -hmm. And your pre-planning, run us through the pre-planning, what you did, what you presented to the examiner? So, um, really standard stuff, to be honest. Uh, we had, of course, mass imbalance, which everyone knows and hates. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like it, but, uh, you know, it's, it's what's got to be done. Make sure the aircraft's safe. Mm -hmm. Also did a fuel calculation. Um, a lot of people, uh, us included, we would just fill up full fuel. There's no problem mm -hmm. with that. And as long as you say to the examiner, all my calculations are here. This is how much fuel we need. Mm -hmm. This is how much fuel I'm going to put in. Why? Because for me, I get mm -hmm. given another hour and 25 minutes of fuel. So if we're stuck holding mm -hmm. or we need to divert to somewhere that's like miles away, it's safe. It shows thinking. As long as you give a good reason for it, yeah. they're fine. Yeah. Uh, other than that, of course, we had the plug. So mm -hmm. that's all, all your headings, uh, all the speed where you're flying to just on a sheet of paper and, and mm -hmm. that goes with your chart. So I did all that the night before and this morning I woke up and um, and put in the correct wind headings and you, you do the calculation for that. Yeah. But yeah, it, it was really the standard planning. It's nothing that if you're at this stage, you wouldn't have done before. So it's nothing to worry about when, because a lot of people were like, oh, you know, I don't really know how to check for no tams. I'm like, ask your instructor. They'll, they yeah. will happily show you on the beginning of one flight and they'll show you oh you know this is how you, you do this, this is how you apply a safety factor to the landing distances and, yeah. and so and so that's one that gets most people out i remember really struggling with um uh, safety factors and things yeah it's, uh, it is difficult um so did anything 
come up in a test that perhaps didn't go to plan? <laughs> uh, uh, we're talking about landing distances, takeoff distances. One important thing that I, I clearly didn't take from my time at school and, and studying physics was remember your units. Yeah. Because what I ended up doing is I, I was like, yeah, we'll be really confident. We're going to have a look in the POH and, yeah. uh, you know, let's oh, oh, there we go. Let's even apply a safety factor. We're going to go from a thousand feet above sea level. Coventry is yeah. only 300. So we'll be well within limits. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I take the number in there and I just slap it into a page uh, of information. And oh, let's go have a look at Coventry's runway. How long's that? It's 2000 meters. Yeah. Have a look at Leicester. Cause that's a good diversion point. Yeah. Uh, and, and slap those all in. So I'm like, yeah, I'm happy. I've got everything I need. And then I went to show my examiner these and he's like, are you sure these are correct? Where did you get this number from? And I'm like, yeah, the POH. I thought it was a trick question. I'm like, yeah, I can tell you exactly where I got it from. I've got yeah. a page right here. Yeah. And he's like, this doesn't look right. So like, just double check it. And I open it up. I'm like, there's the number, see? And I'm like, oh no, it's feet. So yeah. what I ended up having is like a Cessna 172 with just two people on board. who's going to take about yeah. a kilometer and a half to, to take off. <laughs> it's rivaling that of like a 747. So... <laughs> it's easily done though it's yeah. um the odd thing about aviation is there's lots of disparity with units for oh things. my god yeah it's you know and that can be fuel it can be anything it's a nightmare what, what the thing that i hated most was in studying for air law mm -hmm. uh, if anyone study for air law you know how much of a horrible subject it is mm -hmm. because you've got stuff like oh yeah you need to maintain vfr uh minima at all times and you know the the distance given that you have to be away from clouds is always in meters yeah and then the height is always in feet and you're like ah oh, this doesn't really make sense but <laughs> it, it was certainly uh you know something yeah. that it's or, you know you're not going to get failed on that i clearly didn't get failed on it no and i got told i had a really good skills test yeah but it's it's one of those things that you don't really need to be afraid of making mistakes like that. If it's yeah. a small mistake and, and you realise what it is. And you put it right, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, and then yeah. we you know, we, we converted it and we're like, yeah, the session's actually gonna take off in three hundred meters. That sounds much more yeah applicable. Quick scholarship update. So last year we gave away one place to our candidate at Cywell, Leo, and this year we're planning to do the same. We're planning to give away at least one place. If you want to be considered for a scholarship place, you need to register your interest via our website, almat.co.uk. You'll be updated as to all of the upcoming events to do the scholarship. Those events will be aspiring pilots days. You will need to attend at least one of the aspiring pilot days to get your chance to apply for a scholarship place. So go on the website now, almat.co.uk and register your interest. And then finally, we had one thing, and this is something that my examiner said he was really happy that I did. Mm. But um, on uh, on our diversion, I was, you know, did the plug, uh, did everything, and I looked at it. I was like, okay, right, we're going to be on heading two eight zero for thirty eight nautical miles. Mm -hmm. Did all the calculate right? That gives us eighteen minutes uh, at a ground speed one hundred and ten knots. Happy. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, let's just double check this because. Uh, 280 it doesn't look what my chart did my mm. my chart line was heading you know kind of more more towards uh south right, so okay. it was it was heading southwest yeah and i was like you know surely it should be less than 270 so i did yeah. it again and i'm like i because of the way the diversion bosses are they mm. they're, they're quite confusing to read yeah, so i was are, like yeah. actually good job i did check because i'm actually meant to be heading on 260 instead yeah. And you just, again, you pick up the, the error, you do a gross error check, as we say, mm -hmm. and, and you rectify it as soon as you realise that is what shows good flying. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be safe. Do you know what I use on mine? Rule of thumb. Rule of, I use the rule of thumb. Yeah, Whenever yeah, I'm like yeah. position reporting, I'm like, okay, how yeah. far am I? I'm yeah, five yeah. nautical miles away. Yeah, it's good. So did you have any idea at the end that you passed or were you were you confident you passed or were you sort of a bit unsure because you don't i i think and a lot of people will disagree with me i think you know in your head and in your heart whether you've passed or not in any any yeah. exam any test i did when i had my driving test i was like this has gone really well yeah. passed you know, if if I've done badly on a exam in school or had done badly on the exam in school, yeah. I would know coming out because you feel like you're not really performing. I felt very happy after the end of this exam to the extent that even if I got a partial yeah. or a fail, God forbid, you know, I think I'd be pressed to get a fail. But 
even if I got a partial, I was happy with my performance. That's and, good. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I felt like I did a good flight and, yeah. you know, when the time comes again to do the next exam, yeah. then I'll just work on that. But I felt happy. That's good. Uh, m my examiner said, Hey Archie, how do you, how do you feel about this? How do, how do you feel about the flight? And I said, you know, apart from, you know, these, these two little things that I said here, I felt like that was a really good flight. You know, I got yeah. to my diversion point. I was all within, I was in within one minute of mm. my uh, times on my ETAs, which, which is like rivaling that of, of our airlines. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I felt like it went good. He's like, I completely agree. You're a proud owner of a, of a PPL now. And I was, I was ecstatic with the news. No, that's brilliant. No, and you, you certainly looked it when you got up. Oh, God, we had beaming. So la last thing before we head off is um, what advice would you give to anyone worried about their skills test? <sighs> right, so first of all, don't be worried as such. I was worried. I I spent so much time getting prepared for it. The The days before I was going over you know, right, what do I do here? I was doing armchair flying, as uh, yeah. as you guys call it. You know, I was mm. closing my eyes and going, what what do I do in a spiral dive descent? Yeah. I got that yeah. all nailed down. You know how to fly the plane. Your instructors know that you know how to fly the plane. The examiner knows that you know how to fly the plane. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. That it's, it's, it's a hurdle to jump through. You're just yeah. demonstrating your skills. Think of it as if you're, you're showing off your mum or your dad, uh, or your brother or sister or whoever that you can fly the plane be happy about it you've got just, to this stage now yeah you can show don't off. open the door and push them out like you might yeah, do to your mum or your brother and your sister <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um yeah so ov obviously you know do everything that you've been taught do everything that you expect on on exam day even if you don't do it normally i don't normally teach my instructor how to put the seat belt on yeah yeah but yeah you do for the exam that's an important tip though people yeah. forget People, People forget, forget the briefing. Do yeah. brief. Treat them like they don't know anything. Exactly. And yeah. and they will say, I we got to the stage on, on my exam that they're going, Yeah, I I know exactly what you mean. We don't have to do that. I was I was like, Do you want me to talk you through the brace brace position? Uh and he's like, Yep, yeah, we've we've done that already. You're you're mm -hmm. happy to carry on. Mm -hmm. So I A, don't be worried, but also don't just think you you know, don't don't treat it not seriously because there is a story of yeah. of someone who um who didn't treat it seriously. Yeah. Uh, they unfortunately failed because yeah. of that exact reason. The fact that, yeah. that even though they're a great pilot, yeah, they yeah. don't treat it with care. Came yeah. back, treated it very seriously, and then completely aced it. So yeah. treat it with the care it deserves. But also mm -hmm. remember that you know how to fly the plane and yeah. and maybe lay down on the worries a little bit. Yeah. That's brilliant. So last thing for me is just to say well done, mate. Thank you so much. Well, I can't <laughs> wait for what's next, you know. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a pleasure. This is my favourite point of the course, seeing people like you are still buzzing um, from starting off for those conversations we had when you knew nothing about it to <laughs> now. It's a great journey for everybody. So thank you for coming on the podcast again. And, thank uh, you so much. We'll uh, look forward to seeing you on our first flight on the Aviator Show. Oh, for sure. God, yeah. It's Brilliant coming up license. soon. But, but thank um, you, Simon, so much. Yeah, no problem. And please like and subscribe to the channel and ding the uh, bell for notifications. And we'll see you on the next episode. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.